<laughs> Hello. Okay, so we're all on. We're ready to rock. My name's Lane. If you haven't met me in real life, you probably talk to me on the email if we haven't met at the uh, friend in hand before. Um, so just welcoming you to the Zoom. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to keep everyone muted while other people are performing or when there's a video being played. So some people have sent through videos. Uh, because they weren't able to come to the uh, stream. So, um, thanks for coming. Uh, if you want to uh, applaud, uh, but you're muted, so we won't be able to hear you, you can just do a bit of this. So in the heart of hearing community, yeah, I can see some of you guys already doing it. If you just um, do that with your hands, that means applaud. So we can see all your beautiful faces. Um, if you have any problems and you need to get some technical assistance, give me a call. I have my phone here. I'll be off video so you can call me. It's 0433 020127. I'll say that again if you want to write it down. It's 0433 020127. It's also in my email. So the last email that I sent, you'll be able to find it. Um, I'm going to hand you over briefly to... Is it to you first? Yes. Yeah, to our esteemed uh, MC with a very quick welcome to Dale, who will then kick off the proceedings. Okay, thanks very much. Hello, folks. It's Max Stream Elborn here. Um, I don't know anything about technology, as you probably a lot of you would know. So this is great fun for me. Um, I'd just like to ask Dale Dengate if she's with us. Are you there, Dale? Yes, I'm here, Max. All right, Dale, I'm, I'm handing over to you to give the welcome. Thanks, Dale. Right, yeah. Well, I certainly do welcome all of you who've joined us. I uh, couldn't help but thinking as we all sort of practised and Zoom that if John were here, he'd have already written a limerick to send us all up. But nevertheless, <laughs> carry on and in generosity to the whole Zoom technique, we will proceed. First of all, welcome to those who are in the audience. I just uh, hope you can, um, as I say, be generous in understanding this rather clunky Zooming. Not the ideal thing for music, but it's better than nothing. And so I must thank Lane, who uh, suggested, you know, we do have the seventh celebration and who has been the one who has uh, fine-tuned it all, put up with all our questions, and got us here today. Thanks so much, Lay. And then to Max, who's going to be our MC, who for the last seven years has done that, and uh, he'll keep us all in order. And then to all the performers, I, I must say, so many uh, long-time friends of John and myself. Um, yeah, brought a tear to my eyes at times just to think, oh, yeah, so good to see you all. And, and just fantastic to have you join us. Um, it's just, um, yeah, very moving. I know all the family are grateful. And um, yeah, last uh, weekend we uh, had uh, Lachlan and his two friends, Stu and Kylie here. And um, my young neighbor who should be appearing shortly. Um, we were up in the lounge room where many of you might have gathered with us as, um, from the all afternoon. In fact, the last few songs that we uh, hope will get on is um, Lachlan doing this, the song he wrote um, like John, he's and all the Den Gates for interesting words. Um, and it's a song about plagues of past times called Dead Ringer. And so um, he sings that, and I will finish with the um, bare legged coat that we sang as the sun was setting in the lounge room. But now to re return to the beginning, um, when John and I, as young rebels, that fella, well, he wasn't quite that young when I first. Uh, when I got to meet him, uh, but uh, more like, well, this is the last year, isn't it? So yes, he's here with us in spirit, if I got it right. Check. Yeah. Um, yeah, we wouldn't believe this, but when we met, we were rather rebellious in our youth. And um, in those days, you had to stand to sing um, an anthem before you started. Any concert, any entertainment, the films, um, John and I decided, well, it was the British Royal Anthem and we weren't standing. Uh, John was always afraid some lady with a long umbrella was going to poke him and make him stand up. But uh, we, we survived. 
And so now we've got an anthem. So we're going to start with an anthem. Uh, so Lainey, if you've got all that technology ready to go, let's hope it works. Over to you, Lainey, and the video okay. that I last Sunday in our lounge. Australians all oh, let's join the call for we cannot be free of COVID-19's viral threat until we stop the spread. Scrub up and hide your mug they say while in your home you stay. This country's let, oh no, the government's let the budget blow. We hope it's in the know of how to keep this country plum. Or oh, Kiwis, here we come. <laughs> Cinda, let us go. Hi, Dale. Oh, let's get back. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, it's, Dad, I can just see the top of your hair. <laughs> Pull your computer. I can see your light bulb. Now it should be a video of Lachlan and Kylie and uh, Stu. So just letting okay. everyone know, Cal's just having a quick practice. Sean's still at golf, but he's going to come straight back to perform. <laughs> and um, so we're actually on, we, we're just on mute in case you're wondering, we're all the den gates are on. Yeah, I heard you check in, so all good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit complex to get in. I, I, I'm wondering if, like, usually you click on, for us, we had to sort of register and put the numbers in. All right, we're all here. You so all right? Right? Yeah, all right, cool. All good. Awesome. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a good cohort here, so I think we're safe to say we're okay. Oh. All right, cool. So just, so just checking... With the sound, uh, Dale, could, did you say yes, you couldn't hear? Did you say you couldn't hear the video? Yeah. Is it coming through for most people? Can they hear yeah. anything? Yeah, I can hear yeah. well. Our sound is really good here. Turn, turn yourself up full, full. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So Dale, we'll go to the next one. The looks like the whole world is going mad. Yes. Yeah. Again, videoed last Sunday in the lounge room. I will withdraw.
Oh, that was Lockie Denko then, his band. And I think we've got coming up now for you folks, we've got uh, Luce Morley. Are you with us, Luce? Yes, I certainly am, yes. Good on you, Luce. When you're ready, you're the uh, cyberspace is yours. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't say probably when. Hi. Hello? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be doing um, a parody of the heel and toe polka. Um, so here we go. Mm -hmm. I should have sort of mentioned Luce is the person who's a, a neighbour of ours, the Dingo family, mm -hmm. and uh, she helped me last uh, fortnight at the uh, Sydney Folk Festival for the parody concert. So I call her my technical engineer. And uh, yeah, so inspired by all the parodies in the concert last fortnight, uh, Luce wrote the stay at home, the COVID-19 uh, heel and toe. So back over to you, Lane. Okay, Max. Right, yeah. Um, I think we've got our friend Noel coming up now. Let's show you some of this for a minute. Are you there, Noel Gardner? It wasn't changed. You changed something the other last time you came on. Good yeah, on I thought Noel. I'd dress up as a, as a great prime minister likes to go to Hawaii a bit. And I even I bought, bought along some coal because he likes coal so much. So this is called how they call me Skoma. <laughs> They call me Scomo, like the dodo, I'm steeped at the next election. My fossil fuels are my fossilized food, it was spent in any direction. No Rupert said Malcolm had to go, he didn't want a climate action plan. Peter wasn't good at arithmetic, so now I leave this promised land. I'm a slogan that's been marketing man, saying Crocky and camera bubble. I like to spread beer because it helps win votes and it covers our eternal troubles. I'm the man who stopped the boats with Operation Borders. Because we let them come through the airport now. I'm touching to my own orders. They call me Scomo like the dodo. I'm extinct at the next election. My fossil fuels are a fossilized blue. It was spent in any direction. As a Christian family man, I support my kids as they go on. The future is not what I care about. My focus is turns with lumps of coal. 
I support the banks again and again, and as for mates, it's where we stand. From leaders and lifters, it is we decide who gets cut with in our plan. I couldn't support that marriage vote. My religious beliefs are so strong, but not when it comes to refugees. Persecution from us never seems wrong. They call me Scomo like the dodo. I'm extinct at the next election. My fossil fuels and my fossilized fool. It will spin in any direction. The country's on fire as the greenies fall. So I flew to Hawaii for a holiday. Please don't mention climate change. While I slip, flop, flap and hide away. I went to the bar there to show my face, but they yelled abuse, much to my display. Grabbed some people by the hand, then I jumped in the car and ran away. Sports fraud scandals, Richard's fault, with HK Hurt, Blank, Jim and Dan. It's not even my money, I'm never to blame. The rapture is my master plan. They call me Scomo, I like the dodo, I'm extinct at the next election. My fossil fuels, I'm a fossilized fool, it will spin in any direction. My fossil fuels, I'm a fossilized fool, it will rot its way to election. Yeah. Yeah. That was That's no guy. <laughs> Max, could I just say something there? Noel Gardner is very modest. He didn't tell you that he is a previous winner of the John and Dale Dengate Parody Cup at the Illawarra Folk Festival. And I think it was the uh, year. Uh, Yay! Good on you, Noel. That's a great song, mate. They call me Scummo or Scomo, would you say? And <laughs> uh, you want to see if. Um... The Roweth family might want to be. Rightio. Have we See got the Roweth family with us yet? I saw them. Yep, there they are. Yeah? yeah Jason, is there? Yeah. 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 Hey there. Oh, you want to see if they're ready to... Yeah, you guys ready to go, Jason, Chloe? You betcha, you betcha mate. Yeah, yeah, you caught us just a little off, but we're right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's good to see everybody. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's going to be a fun afternoon. I thought we'd do something from uh, our side of the ranges. So Father Helen and Juina, their stories shall always be told. And none can deny our illusion, her place in the story of gold. But written in nuggets and quiet grey, her ruling Canadian bee. The glittering history of gold on is dead for Australia to read. But loud were the shots and the laughter as diggers with joy unrestrained. When paddling around in the gutter and picking up gold when it rained. But written with nuggets and fire clay on ruined Canadian bee. The glittering history of gold on is there for Australia to read. King of the road, but written in nuggets and fly clay, hung ruling Canadian league. The glittering history of gold on is there for Australia to read. I 
Let's sit pipe clay, hum rule in Canadian league. The ring history of gold long is there for Australia to read. Hey. Here's one for John. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, much to uh, to sorry, to um, Jason and Chloe. No worries. Good to hear from you again. Ah, uh, good to see you too, Max. Good to see everybody. I'll jump out the way, Max, if you'd like to have. Do you want to do Megan's poem yeah. now? Is that the way you'd like yes. to do it? Yeah, yeah. that will be great. Okay, here she comes. <laughs> I'm just over on the off-screen couch most of the. <laughs> Most of the time. Okay. Um, this is the one that I actually um, learned for the John Dangate concert we were doing um, a, a few weeks back. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that that concert happened because it actually took that for me to look at all the poems I know and go, wait, wait, I don't have any Dangate in here. And that was a problem. So um, I fixed the problem. <laughs> um, I was flipping through um, through one of the books, I found this one, and I just sort of, I looked at it and I realized, yeah, yeah, this one, this, this is the one, sort of resonated with me, I guess. <laughs> no political songs. That's what he said to me. That kind of caper will get us all hung. There's plenty of nice little songs to be sung. So, Johnny, you curb your satirical tongue and no political songs. No political songs. That's what he said to me. The worry is making us nervous wrecks. The censor has warned us of what he expects. So don't mention religion and keep off of sex and no political songs. No political songs. That's what he said to me. We're having a concert at King George's Tower. We'd like you to sing for about an hour. Suburban gardens are all out in flower. And no political songs. No political songs. That's what he said. To me. Now, I don't object to them personally, but some people find them offensive, see? And LJ Hooker is paying your fee, so no political songs. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Megan. That was the Roweth family. Can I just ask? Um, I've been trying to get in touch with Bobby Campbell. Has anybody heard from Bobby Campbell lately from uh, Golgong? Um, Max, the only thing, yeah, when the virus first kicked off, he appeared on Facebook after I'd not seen him for a long time, and he was he was putting a song or two up every couple of days, but that seems yeah. to have faded away now. So, uh, yeah, no, we haven't heard from him for at least a couple of months no. now, I'd say. Mm. I haven't heard either. No, I'll have to get someone to track him down. All right, thanks, Jason. That's great, mate. Did you check the Centennial? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, where are we now, Lane? Okay, so I want to see if uh, Mary Jane Field might want to have a go. Mary Jane Field, are you with us? I'm just going to unmute her. There you go. You're just being unmuted? Yeah, so I just press the button. There we go. My yeah. Name? Hello. Okay, hello. Everybody. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not doing a parody because I'm doing a song that means a lot to me. I used to... Yeah. In the days when we could go out and do things, okay. Then the days when we could go out and do things, oh, that was good. there we go. Um, and I used to go to Central all the time, gadding about, and there was John at the corner practicing his tin whistle. And he chose a song, which, well, one of the many songs, but I first heard this song when I came from South America to the United States, and I was fascinated by the folk music, which I'd never heard in, in Argentina. And um, it was one of the first things I ever heard, and I loved it. So I would sing along with John or harmonize, and he was very, very gracious. He didn't mind at all, and he didn't say he did. And so that's the song I'm going to sing now. It's called Shenandoah. And some of you may have heard him sing it. I don't know if you have or not. Have you been to Central Station lately? I can't hear you if you have. 
O oh, Shenandoah, I love your daughter. Shenandoah, I love your daughter. Away, we're bound to go across the wide Missouri. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you away. We're bound to go across the wide Missouri. It's seven long years since first I saw you far away. Seven long years since first I saw you away. We're bound to go across the wide Missouri. Oh, Shenandoah, I love your daughter. That's it. Thank you, Mary Jane Field. Amazing. Beautiful rendition of that song. And I can just imagine you singing along with Johnny in the tunnels down at Betty Avenue there. Well, I'm glad that he's he was doing instrumentally because I have my own version of the order of verses and I've looked them up quite a few times and they're always different. So. I'm glad he wasn't singing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That would have been hard to match. <laughs> so we're going to do Mike Martin's video. Okay. Video. Um, thanks again to Mary Jane Field. And I think we've got Mike Martin coming up next on video. Um, yeah. That's where we're at now. Mike Martin's going to be doing Put Them in the Ring with Dengate. <laughs> Put them in the ring with Dengue And we'll see how the right wing fare No blood would be spilt Just a puddle of guilt Humanity's what they fear Put them in the ring with Dengue Put, Put them in, in the, the ring, ring with, with Dengue. Dengue The treasurer The age of entitlement Well there's a punchline there A knife in the back A vicious attack For those who need our welfare? Put him in the ring with Dengate. Put him in the ring, ring with, with Dengate. Dengate. The Minister for Education, a pain for those who care. A right little brat, a private school hack. The old school tie they wear. Put him in the ring with Dengate. Put, Put him in the ring, ring with, with Dengate. Dengate. The Minister for Immigration, an immigrant, let's be fair. He'll jail the folks, he'll stop the boats, and the life of those in despair. Put him in the ring with Dengate. Put, Put him, him in, in the, the ring, ring with, with Dengate. Dengate. The Prime Minister, he wouldn't last the distance. He's got no bleeding idea. A total disgrace to the human race. A puppet to the Institute of Public Affairs. Put him in the ring with Dengate. Put him in the ring, ring with Dengate. Dengate. And we'll see how the right wing fare. No blood would be spilt, just a puddle of guilt. Humanity is what they fear. Put him in the ring with Dengate. Put him in the ring with Dengate. Yes? Yeah. 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 We all went away. Um, Jason and Chloe will back me up on this. We went away for a... Uh, a long weekend they came it was John came up from Sydney and along with Alan Musgrove and we uh, we played in Bathurst and then we went over to Mudgee and played with Bobby Campbell who uh, Max I was uh, meant to have a session with about three weeks ago so he's still around and he's still going but the session was called off because of Covid so he's still there. Right. Anyway, on the way okay so 
on the way back from. He's well. From Mudgee, hey, he's well. Yeah, on the way back from uh, Mudgee and from Home Rule, we stopped in at the Safala Pub and played there for an afternoon, which ended up being the whole evening. And then we ended up going home, back to my place, and we'd been given a bottle of whiskey, a bottle of Bushmills, which we uh, we rather enjoyed. And John held on to it like a like a baby in a car seat. You know, he wasn't going to let it. Best whiskey in the world. It's the best whiskey in the world, he'd say. <laughs> Listen, Mike, uh, just have to stop you there, mate. We can't have commercials on this show. We don't mention the name. No worries. Anyway, we, we got home and we, we finished off the bottle of whiskey and then um, everybody went, well, Jason and Chloe had to drive on home. Chloe was the designated driver, which was lucky. And I put um, John to bed in my daughter's bedroom and uh, Alan Musgrove ended up somewhere else quite a long way away because he snores badly. But anyway, we uh, put John to sleep and he woke up in the middle of the night and he couldn't find the door to get out of the, uh, out of the bedroom. Now, I was told this a, a lot later than... than Jason told me about this about three weeks later, but John woke up in the middle of the night and he, uh, he couldn't find the door to get out to go to the toilet and he couldn't find the, the light switch, but he did find his shoe. And that was the puddle of guilt. <laughs> ah, yes, the puddle of guilt. That's a good one. Yeah, I've heard about my old man did it once into the pocket of an overcoat. Yeah. It's an interesting, well, interesting choice of vessel. Yes, I'm, I'm just glad it's a strainer, it isn't it? Yeah, I'm just glad it wasn't a sandal. <laughs> That's right. Good on you, Mike. Well, thanks very much, mate. And uh, no we've got to, we're going we're gonna to move on now and see if anybody else has got any more commercials. Yeah. Let me see if uh, Ian McDougall is with us. Is Ian McDougall with us in the house, in the cyberspace house? I feel he's here somewhere. There he is. Yep. There's Ian. How are you? Can you hear us, Ian? Yes, I can hear you, but can you hear me? <laughs> I yes, can hear you clear, loud and clear. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, loud and clear, mate. Oh, rare. Very good. Very good. Okay. And you're, uh, you've got the floor for when you're ready. Uh, oh, am I? Oh, right. Yeah, well, I'll just get my guitar here. It's very handy close by. <laughs> and uh, I've got a devoted audience of one, I believe. <laughs> uh, this is it. Can you hear that all right? Yes, yeah. mate. And you're doing the outside track. The I am one, doing the outside track, yes. Beautiful yeah. song, yeah. And uh, um, Jerry Hallam did uh, his version of this, which is a very good tune. And uh, I and, and Chris Kemps performed that. Uh, and the, I've written this tune myself. And uh, this is my own tune. And... Uh, so that uh, this, of course, I did dedicate to the memory of John and it's offered to Dale and his family as well. And uh, the outside track is the track that goes from Birdsville down to Maori in South Australia. And uh, depending on the conditions, there was the outside track and the inside track and the drovers would take the cattle or stock or um, whatever down to the, the railhead of Myree. And so it's a bit of a legendary track. And uh, this is Henry Lawson in 1896. He's 28 years old and uh, He's reflecting on the day's activities. There were ten of us there on the moonlit key, and one on the forward hatch. No straighter mate to his mates than he had ever said, lend us a man. Twill be long, old man, ere our glasses clink. Twill be long ere we grip your hand. And then we dragged him ashore for a final drink. 
and the whole wide world seem grand. Well, they marry and go as the world rolls back. They marry and vanish and die. But their spirit shall live on the outside track as long as the years go by. The port lights glowed in the morning mist that rolled from the waters green. And over the railing we grabbed his fist as the dark time came between. We cheered the captain and cheered the crew and our mate time's out of mind. We cheered the land he was going to and the land he was leaving behind. We roared Lang Syne as our last farewell, but my heart seemed out of joint, and I will remember the hush that fell when the steamer passed the point. We drifted on home through the public bars. We were ten times less by one who had sailed out under the morning stars and into the rising sun. For they marry and go as the world rolls back. They marry and banish and die. But their spirit shall live on the outside track as long as the years go by. And one by one and two by two they've sailed from the wharf since then. I have said goodbye to the last I knew to the last of the careless men and I can't but think of the times we had were the best times after all as I turn aside with a lonely glass and I drink to the barroom wall For they marry and go as the world rolls back. They marry and vanish and die. But their spirit shall live on the outside track as long as the years go by. But I'll try me luck for a check out back. Then a last goodbye to the bush. For my heart's away on the outside track. On the track of the steerage bush. We cheered the captain and cheered the crew. And our mate time's out of mind. Cheered the land he was going to, and the land he was leaving behind. They marry and go as the world rolls back, they marry and vanish and die. 
but their spirit shall live on the outside track as long as the years go by. There you go. Thanks, Mike. That was great. Oh, good. So you, that was your tune. Yeah, that's my was tune. Your tune, Mike. Ian. Ian, beautiful. And did you sing that with Chris Kempster? Well, Chris sang the Jerry Hallam tune, and uh, right, yeah. And I, I never, sang, I never sang it with Chris. No. No. Uh, Chris right. and I okay. had a lot. Chris and I go back a long way, but uh, we're used to anything. Where, where, where are you living now? Well, I've got, uh, at the moment, I'm here in Canberra. Oh, you're back in Canberra? Yeah. Yeah, I go where back. Where is he? Oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do this uh, from the bush. No, I'm in the bush. <laughs> uh, the, the internet's too rough there. <laughs> Uh, where are you living actually when well i've got two places we we my wife and i uh, yes, we yes. have a, have shares in the property up at galagandone and we will say don't tell him too much <laughs> <laughs> oh well, i mean uh i gotta know how to contact you to get you to do a gig in the illawarra oh well i i'm here, I'm here now you can talk to me now <laughs> <laughs> you can hey, 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 talk off screen hey, if you like. Hey Russell, you can you can poach the performers another time, but <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I didn't I didn't start that. I didn't start it. <laughs> Mate, Talking your own time, you. Mary, Mary Peterson will be really sorry she missed you because uh, she didn't know you were on, and she tried to get in, but it was it just didn't work. So I'll tell yeah. you. Uh, my understanding, my understanding, it'll be on YouTube. Oh, okay. I'll yes. Tell yeah. So it's uh, all of this is being recorded. So hopefully, um, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to upload because it, it'll be a couple of hours. Um, but I'll I'll be sending it out on the email. Oh, great! Thank you very much, Lane. Um, Thanks again, Ian. Time. Thanks again. Lovely. All right. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to Doug Jenner sporting suicide. Okay, we've got a video. A, uh, a video we recorded, and this one's yeah. Doug recorded actually in uh, England somewhere. France. France. <laughs> okay, he does get around our Doug Jenner. <laughs> uh, he is a good mate of John's, a good mate of ours. Yeah. So it's great to hear from from Doug again, even if it is um, what do you call it? <laughs> Virtually. What? Virtually. That's it. Thank you, Lane. Okay, here's Doug Jenner. Oh, hi friends. Um, it's, it's just so great to be part of this seventh Don Dengate Memorial Concert. I feel honored to uh, be able to make a contribution uh, and uh, send all my love to everybody um, as well. Um, when I was thinking about what I was going to do for this, I, I I was reflecting on the fact that I've lived over this part of the world for quite a while now and in the early days I admit to making a lot of money out of patriotic fools by basking in Australia's sporting triumphs and, uh, and placing a lot of bets. But that was in the good old days and things have changed now and I'm the patriotic fool and, and people take money off me. Um, so time to sing John's song, Sporting Suicide sometimes known as Beaten by the Ponds. Uh, the tune that John chose for this was uh, uh, Go to See No More. Caught in a scratch my nose before I start. Zimbabwe humbled our cricket team and Queensland beat the blue. The Kiwis over in Auckland, they have shaken the kangaroos. It was Mitter on 20 and Bob Hawk knew in the argument over the bombs. But I'll drive to the gap 
and jump over, old chap, if we're beaten by the palms. The palms, boys, the palms, beaten by the palms. Drive to the gap and jump over, old chap, if we're beaten by the palms. We used to be kings of Wimbledon And we won the Forest Hills We'd warrant our sides Who could fling it out wide And astonish you with their skills I'll wager the mint Our women could sprint And blimey we could swim And when Elliot ran there was no mortal man that stay the mile with him. With him, boys, with him. Stay the mile with him. When Elliot ran, there was no mortal man that stay the mile with him. How we've sunk from those lofty heights that we climbed to in the past. It's bloody good fun when you're winning, my friend, but no fun finishing last. And when recycled Rhodesians go and smack Australia's sea. It's time to be frightened of Lichtenstein. They're a damned hard side to be. The palms, boys, the palms, beaten by the palms. Drive to the gap and jump over old chap if we're beaten by the palms. I dreamt we were beaten at Aussie rules in a massive final score. But it wasn't the mighty Munster men, it was just El Salvador. I'm worried the way our cricketers play and my apprehension shows. I fear for the night that we fall to the might of a terrible Eskimos. The palms, boys, the palms, beaten by the palms. Drive to the gap or turn on the gas tap if we're beaten by the palms. The palms, boys, the palms, beaten by the palms. Drive to the gap or turn on the gas tap if we're beaten by the palms. Ordered for this program from France, apparently. It was probably about four o'clock in the morning there, Doug. I think you might be watching this show. Good to see you in cyberspace, mate. Um, what have we got coming up next, Lane? So, um, have we got uh, Tony Smith available? Let's have a look for Tony. I, I can see Tony on screen. Are there you there, Tony? Yep, I'll mute you, boy. There he is. Yeah, I'm here. Have I got to press something or? You oh, you're, we've got you now. Yeah. 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 Hear you loud and clear. <laughs> so, 
Do I go? Yeah, take it away when you're ready, mate. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Max. And thanks, Laney, for organising the Zoom. And um, hello to Dale and everyone else. Uh, <clears throat> the background of this uh, poem by none other than me and Joe Dengate is that I come from a place called Forest Grove. It's out here in Bathurst, out in Wiradjuri country. <clears throat> and uh, I used to go down to Sydney for work and I'd see John busking. And one day on the uh, way home in the bus, I wrote a uh, poem about John. And because he lived at Glebe, well, I reckon that was close enough to Iron Cove. And that suggested to me that um, maybe somebody who was always reciting the man from Iron Bark, a good title for the poem I sent him was The Man from Iron Cove. Well, anyway, it didn't take John long to send me a, a handwritten copy of a, a poem um, called The Man from Forest Grove to show me really how the um, expert Patterson parodist would do it. So here it is, The Man from Forest Grove. It was the man from Forest Grove who struck the Sydney town. He wandered over Wet Hyde Park. He wandered up and down. He loitered here, he loitered there, till damp seeped in his bones, until he paused in sheer despair across from David Jones. He cast a jaundiced glance towards the grey and rainy sky, when suddenly he heard a tune, the road to Gundagai. He saw a figure, spare and lean. He heard the whistle play. It was his mate, the busker, with his specks and beard of grey. This bloody weather, he complained, would drive a man insane. How can a busker make a quid with all this bloody rain? And Bible bashes saving souls from dawn till bloody dusk on this here bloody corner while I'm trying to bloody busk. He eyed the bushman sadly and he said, what do you think? How about a nice dry pub? I need a bloody drink. But the bushman was teetotal, so the busker gave a sigh. He stooped to count his money as the rain fell from the sky. The old friends parted company, the bushman left to eat, as the strains of Flower of Scotland sounded sadly down the street. Banjo Dingate. Beautiful stuff. That was lovely, mate. Very nice one. Beautifully read. Thanks very much, Thank mate. And um, I'll see who we've got coming up next. So we're going to do a, a little story from Johnny Clough. We're going to play. Um, but if I wanted to see if um, Chris Maltby might want to go after John. Chris Maltby there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Right. Would you be, work, yes. be happy to go work, after yes. Johnny Clough's story? For sure. Fantastic. All right. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay. So this is a song from uh, Mr. Chairman no. Clough. Story. Uh, sorry, a little story about John uh, and uh, very special, uh, very uh, rare, very rare video coming your way. And then, yeah, whenever you feel comfortable. Well, why not? Okay. Well, to start with, the uh, was John and Dengate. We'd, we'd been to a, a piano recital with Hashem Jalal doing his uh, piano piece from exam. And... Uh, we're leaving there, which is the Tom Mann Theatre in Chalmers Street. <laughs> uh, and, which is on, just on Prince Alfred Park. So we enter Prince Alfred Park and as we're, as we're walking through there, I mentioned to John about the opposite corner where this Greek church is how I used to pass there going to my the job I was doing at the moment with the Chinese Embassy in Elizabeth Street. I used to pass the church and they'd taken down this plaque on the, uh, the old diggers who 
who passed in the uh, in the fourteen eighteen war, and it, it, the, the war looked so bad. I said, "What's so?" To satisfy my curiosity, I I went into the church grounds and found someone and said, "You know, what's going on here?" The uh, and anyway, he stopped me in my tracks by saying, "Oh, mate, we, it's this." getting so bad, we decided to have it fixed up. So it's a way now, oh, well, that's fine. So I'm telling this story to John, I said, also on that plaque, there's, there's two or three names came up all the time, so it must have been a family to, he said, I know about that. And, and with that, John actually gave me a, a bit of a history lesson for the, the church itself was, the cemetery was was taken from, uh, what would be like uh, George Street, uh, uh, and, and replanted where it is now, at the other end of the, more I guess, court of Cleveland and, uh, and Regent Street. Mm -hmm. They uh, had to replace it there, and and then he, but then he started to give it to me in song. And also, the, the people's names were mentioned. <laughs> I couldn't remember the names. It's, but he, and he just reeled them off in the song. And it was so beautiful. And that was, uh, and we, this was all through the park, through Prince Alfred Park. And when we left the park, we just around the corners, of, the Greek church, and, uh, and and lo and behold, there's the plaque, it's been restored. Oh. As, good, as good as gone, I just looked at John, I said, oh, geez, it's just bloody magic. <laughs> so that was a walk in the park with John Dengay. A small problem with the transmission, as you can see, I don't know if you got the same pictures we got, it was partly like a hand-painted portrait of Johnny Clough <laughs> and some still pictures of him sitting there in all his glory. So it was a great uh, testament to um, technology. I think uh, some people are too good to be, be captured by the camera. Well, that's what it is. Too yeah. special. Johnny's too valuable to be recorded on yeah. film, that's right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to Chris. Chris Mulby's coming uh, up next. Are you there, Chris? I, I am here. Yes, I, I was going to say, it's, surely it's Malcolm Turnbull's NBN. <laughs> but someone's got to be to blame. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> at this time especially. Blame Malcolm. We're very good at passing around the blame. Yeah. I, I'm going to blame Lane for this one because she, she pointed this all at the at the, at the the John Dingate words website and so I was trawling through thinking what will I do and then I found something that that Nick could be used a little bit of updating so this is this is one of John's parodies that's been parodied I'm afraid right it's called the job seeker package <laughs> oh I'm tired of the job seeker package it's not stimulating at all job keepers depressing i feel like protesting and getting arrested outside the town hall well there should be a system imposing large fines for they keep on repeating the same bloody lines five minutes of scomo requires six beers and damn josh fried eggberg just bores me to tears Oh, I'm tired of the job seeker package. It's not stimulating at all. Job keepers depressing. I feel like protesting and getting arrested outside the town hall. Well, they keep saying that it's unprecedented. For they, and we're in this together. I'm huddled in bed while they rave about flexible work and tax cuts. It's clear to Brian Freddy, they're right off their nuts. Oh, I'm tired of the job seeker package. It's not stimulating at all. Job keepers depressing. I feel like protesting and getting arrested outside the town hall. Oh, where have the colorful characters gone? The PM stands up and he drones on and on. An hour long lecture to him's a brief chat. But at least he's not Abbott 
I'm thankful for that, for I'm tired of the job seeker package. It's not stimulating at all. Job keepers depressing, I feel like protesting and getting arrested outside the town hall. Now it's hard to imagine how it could be worse, not even the nationals and bush poets verse. But as if just to prove it's no flash in the pan, there's a love-in with Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. Oh, I'm tired of the job seeker package. It's not stimulating at all. Job keepers depressing, I feel like protesting and getting arrested outside the town hall. And this is John. Now bring back Paul Keating and then let him loose. What we all need now is some decent abuse, some nasty invective with insults that bite, and poisonous speeches with plenty of spite. So I'm tired of the job seeker package. It's not stimulating at all. Job keepers depressing, I feel like protesting, and getting arrested outside the town hall. <laughs> Thank you all. And it didn't mention the virus, you'll notice. Oh, sorry, I just didn't mention the virus. Sorry about that. Oh my God, I think we've got it on our computer. So mix up Cal Dingate. And yeah, if we could find on the screen at the moment, Cal Dingate. Are you there, Cal? Yep. How's it going? Oh, good on you, mate. Good. There he is. All right. Take it. Uh, this is Big Love by Fleetwood Mac. Uh, it's not by John Dengate, John Dengate, but it's our next best thing. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Since last year, <laughs> yeah, the voice is awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. Years have gone far too quickly. Thank you. They do go quickly, don't they? Thanks, and heats, Cal. Thanks, Cal. This off as well. Beautiful, mate. Thank you. All right.
Bruce Watson, have we got Bruce Watson with us? Yes, we do. I'm here. I'm okay to go. Oh, ready to go? Yep. Fantastic. Good on you, Bruce. Okay, so um, this is a, a little parody that I wrote for John. Um, we spent uh, a lot of time together one year at Woodford. Um, we were both camping and uh, at six o'clock every morning, it got too hot to stay in our tents. And so we spent um, a few hours before things started happening, just chatting in the, um, in the green room, drinking tea, believe it or not, and, and solving the world's problems. And um, one day he said, look, I'm, I'm in a debate tomorrow and um, it's all about me. Um, because some of you may be aware that John was quite fond of Coopers, if I may um, mention sponsors. And um, there was a bit of an issue because the sponsor for Woodford was Guinness. And uh, so the topic of the debate was something along the lines of, is John Dengate a traitor to the Woodford sponsor? So he asked me to um, be on his team in the debate and um, he said, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is say that I'm, I'm, I'm really good. So I thought, well, that'd be easy enough. So uh, this is what I came up with. And I haven't sung it since 1998. There was a wild folk singer. John Dengate was his name. A poor but honest parodist, from Sydney town he came. He spent his life composing songs whose legacy has lasted. He stood his ground, his righted wrongs, is a bloody nice old bastard. Now some say he is a traitor, to the Woodford sponsor, Guinness. But I say that's a load of crap, and it's no one else's business. He's got a right to spend each night in paralytic stupors, and greater love hath no man than John Dengate for his Coopers. Last night he asked me if I'd take his side in this debate. He said that all I'd have to do was say that he was great. So here I go. He's fabulous. He's gorgeous, full of grace. And who could fail to love that pale, bespectacled old face? So come along, me hearties, we'll sing John Dengate's praise. He's absolutely wonderful in oh so many ways. He's witty and he's generous, as a friend he'll never fail. So give a break to my old mate and cheer for Cooper's Ale. Thank you very much. Good on you, John Dingate. We missed you. I love that one. <laughs> Good on you, Bruce. Thanks, Thanks for it. And of course, in true form, John wrote a return poem for me, which I might do at next year's um, thing. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bruce. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Johnny, Johnny Dingate wrote the Cooper's song and he sent it to them in Adelaide, where their brewing place was at the time. And they didn't want it, the bloody idiots. Oh, what they Would have been the best promotional song anyone ever wrote. They were probably yeah, jealous. Right. <laughs> Coopers were actually the uh, sponsor of the Illawarra Folk Festival. And the Coopers song appears on oh. one of our earlier uh, CDs. As soon as they sponsored us, oh. we put the Coopers song on. Oh. Great. Uh, found a home. <laughs> And uh, we're just going to go quick back to Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Yeah, Mary Jane. Okay. Um, a friend of mine that has always told me how much she was influenced by music in primary school 
And when I told her what I was doing today, she just sent me a few minutes ago a little note saying, please, you'll have to tell them about former Marathon West primary school students that John was a teacher. His tin whistle guitar, his tin whistle, his guitar, his sea shanties, and bush swings. He would have us sing often in class, wonderful memories for a child. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Well, there, there used to be twin barmaids at the uh, at Grumpy's Hotel at the Holston Park pub. Uh, <laughs> the twin barmaids were both taught by John Dengate. So his um, <laughs> teaching was very handy in finding your place in the world. <laughs> But they loved Johnny. They said they said he was a great teacher, and they were delighted to see him again when we called him there. Yeah. Miguel, are you ready for a song, mate? There we go. Yes, there certainly. Yeah. I'll do the one Excellent. I always do. There's hardly anyone else knows it. I think um, the Liberals, darling. Lest we forget. Great. Peter Costello was a bastard. The story goes that, um, um, most of you probably know it already, um, John was drinking with uh, a mate of his from the BLF, I think Joe Owens, possibly, maybe not. Um, <clears throat> and um, they'd had a few. And the other guy says, um, well, yes, Costello's a bastard, but you know, he's, you've got to cut him some slack. I mean, his mother hated him. And John said, no. Slams his drink down and says, his mother didn't, have, <clears throat> he's not a bastard because his mother hated him. His mother hated him because he's a bastard. <clears throat> to sing you a song is my purpose and aim concerning a Polly Costello by name. The Liberals, darling, a financial whiz. He's federal treasurer, that's what he is. When he was a baby, his mother said, Pete, most little children are cuddly and sweet. Most mothers, their dear little babies adore. But you are a bastard and that is for sure. His childhood was spent doing horrible things like tearing off poor little butterflies' wings, bullying infants, reneging on bets, robbing his granny and torturing pets. When he was just 14, his father said, Son, I'm not very proud of some things that I've done. I poisoned my mates with a tainted home brew. But my car was fathering you. He sugared the petrol, he short-sheeted beds. He filled up the air vents with rotten prawn hair. and callous, vindictive and cruel. He was king of the dobbers when he went to school. The neighbours took up a collection one day to buy him a ticket and send him away to Bathurst or Beijing or Belfast or Rome. But no one would have him, so he stayed at home. And now he is treasurer wielding his axe on national broadcasting students and blacks. Slashing and burning and kicking at heads Till thousands lie trembling in fear in their beds He derives satisfaction and joy from his work You can tell by his smarmy self-satisfied work But don't lose your temper and don't lose your nerve Remember we're getting just what we deserve yeah, Ronnie Miguel. That was a good one. <laughs> Is there Seamus now? Yeah, yeah, I hear, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Oh, you're there. And, yeah, sure. yeah. Can you, you hear me? Here. Yes, indeed. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do the Murdoch song. <laughs> Mr. Murdoch's very wealthy, there are lots of things he owns, 
but his specialty is tapping into other people's phones. All the citizens of England, when they ring their kith and kin, say hello to Mr. Murdoch, for he's always listening in. He's a snoopy prying bastard, he invades your privacy. Cover up your bathroom keyhole when you go to have a pee. And if you ring up your girlfriend, don't be ardent or risque, for the whole of bloody England will be reading it next day. Mr. Murdoch may be crinkly, Mr. Murdoch may be aged, but he takes an avid interest when your telephone's engaged. Keep the conversation flowing, don't be taciturn or strained. That's not fair to Mr. Murdoch, you must keep him entertained. He's a snooping, prying bastard, he invades your privacy. Cover up your bathroom keyhole when you go to have a pee. And if you ring up your girlfriend, don't be taciturn or strained. And if you ring up your girlfriend, don't be ardent or risque, for the whole of bloody England will be reading it next day. Rely on Mr. Murdoch, all you pummies don't despair. If your telephone starts ringing, Mr. Murdoch will be there, with his earphones and recorders and his electronic gear. And make sure that you enunciate He's deaf in his left ear. He's a snooping, prying bastard. He invades your privacy. Cover up your bathroom keyhole if you go to have a pee. And if you ring up your girlfriend, don't be ardent or risque. For the whole of bloody England will be reading it next day. Thank you, Lesha. Yeah. <laughs> What about uh, lovely Margaret Bradford? We've got her on the list here. Have we got Margaret here at the moment? Yes, I'm ready. Margaret Bradford, are you there? Ready to go. Yep. Are you ready to go? There oh, we good go. On you. Good on you, darling. All right, we'll just pop it over to you now. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I can relate to uh, John's train song because we've done lots of train traveling, Alan and I. Either cycle, walk or train. And this is so relevant. We're waiting for the train and you think, oh, it's, it's not going to where I wanted to go. <laughs> I'll see if I can get started. I won't use a guitar because I think it's better to just my voice. Waiting, waiting for the 20 past four to arrive. Make the 20 past four doesn't run anymore. And the next train's a quarter past five. Time means money, they say. And I must get to Guildford today. Did they say platform nine on the Liverpool line? Do I have to change trains on the way? Indicator, please won't you indicate soon with your little round light that this platform is right. I've been waiting central since noon. This old fella here next to me point to Alan. Caught the bus up to Circular Quay. He scratches his ass with his pensioner's pass. You don't do dreadful things like that, do you, Alan? <laughs> but he's on the wrong line for now, we. Waiting, waiting for the 20 past four to arrive. Make the 20 past four doesn't run anymore and the next train's a quarter past five. Come on, you timetable. Oh, mob, I'm desperately short of a bob. I'm in my best gear and I'm right off the beer. And at Guildford, they say there's a job. Indicator, please won't you indicate soon with your little round light that this platform is right. I've been waiting at Central since noon. The service is worse than a fraud. The fare's more than I can afford. But I'll never complain. Here comes the train to Guildford and now I'm aboard. But, mm, it's Wentworthville, Pendle Hill. We're rattling towards the new plains. I should have got out when I heard someone shout at Granville, you have to change trains. So I'm waiting, 
waiting for the 20 past eight to go back. But the 20 past eight is a half hour late and I think I'll lie down on the track. Let's finish. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. Beautiful work. Great version. Okay, so I want to see who are we uh, trying to locate now. We've got uh, Chris, Chris Clark. Are you with us there, sir? I think I can see you there with the harp behind you. I am indeed here in Canberra. Yes. How would you like to take the... Oh, sure. At whereabouts? In Canberra. Canberra, beautiful. Yeah, I'm I've it. been singing your song, Chris, of the uh, rock around the clock, walk around the block. Yes. Um, I had a little, I had a, a very short story which would do as an introduction uh, to, to my little, little song for John. And that was that at a National Folk Festival some years ago, I was standing behind him in a queue. Um, and to my great surprise, he appeared to be singing Abide With Me. Um, and uh, as I sort of got, got a bit closer, I realised that he was actually composing Of Course I Can't Abide. And uh, I caught up with him later that evening around a brazier and he, he sang to me his, his then draft of it, which was great. Um, and when we did a tribute concert for him in Canberra, the, uh, the shiny bum sang, um, I can't abide this mob either, which was an update to his, because by that stage we had, um, uh, we had Tony Abbott, um, who hadn't yet gone to be the uh, Deputy Trade Commissioner of the UK, um, with us, uh, with his particular mob. Um, and so, uh, we sang there uh, for him something like this. I can't abide the government front bench, though they are new, already there's a stench. Abbots and bishops, incense wafting free, Resist the urge to run and hide like me. And can you hear that weird god awful whine? It seems to come from Christo Pompous Pine. And Jolly Hockey sticks it to us free. He'll tax me dry if he abides with me. And can you hear that other vapid voice? From a toad to cockroach crawls Barnaby Joyce. Tales told by idiots, how can we break free from this miasma that abides with me. Behind the throne and smirking in the slime crouches Malcolm Turnbull waiting for his time. Who needs Kevin Rudd while Malcolm stalks the mud? Will he flush and rush him then abide with me? Who else is there? Does anybody care? What a dreary line-up, not a trace of flair. Someone cast a spell to mask this awful smell. Chamber of horrors, oh, just go to hell. Fantastic. That was brilliant. Yeah. I, I, I've got to say that John recorded that. Peter Reith was his pet hatred back in the days when he first wrote it. And he recorded that for me so I could play it on air in his dunny. In my dunny, I'm sorry. 
he was he was at my place and I said, Can you record this? The best sound you get's in the dunny. And he went in the dunny and I took the thing in there and he sat down on the dunny seat and recorded that song for me. Ah, oh, beautiful. Lane, can I just show a photo? You sure can. It's right. Peter Ruth using the shoes, Russell. Can you see it? There it is. There it is. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Do you recognise anyone there? Ah, oh, look at him. And look at the girl next to him, his girlfriend. Is that, is that Miss Dale? That's Miss Dale, yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Uh, that, that, was when when I, that was when I first when met him. Oh, I, I think I had met him just before, but he came down to Shell Harbour. We had a, a fundraising thing in the late 70s for uh, one of our politicians, Bill Knopf, I think it was for. And uh, he came down and I asked him to come down and sing a couple of songs. And uh, when he came down, I said, look, can we compensate you for your, um, for, your, for your travel expenses and stuff? You know, he said, no, 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 no. He wouldn't take anything, but he did buy a ticket in the raffle. And you wouldn't believe this. It was a Labor Party raffle, mind you, but <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe it, but it was a first prize with this huge bottle of whiskey. And guess who won? <laughs> John Dengate won it. And I've got a photo somewhere. I found that one when I was cleaning up. I put it on a postcard and I sent it out with a little poem on the back. But you would not believe, and Dale would remember, that he won this absolute... Lane, can I just show a photo? You sure can. It's right. Peter Ruth using the shoes, Russell. Can you see it? There it is. There it is. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Do you recognise anyone there? Ah, oh, look at him. And look at the girl next to him, his girlfriend. Is that, is that Miss Dale? That's Miss Dale, yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> that, that, was when when I, that was when I first when met him. Oh, I, I think I had met him just before, but he came down to Shell Harbour. We had a, a fundraising thing in the late 70s for uh, one of our politicians, Bill Knopf, I think it was for. And uh, he came down and I asked him to come down and sing a couple of songs. And uh, when he came down, I said, look, can we compensate you for your, um, for your, for your travel expenses and stuff? You know, he said, no, 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 he wouldn't take anything, but he did buy a ticket in the raffle and you wouldn't believe this. It was a Labor Party raffle, mind you, but <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe it, but it was a first prize with this huge bottle of whiskey and guess who <laughs> won it? John <laughs> Dengate won it. And I've got a photo somewhere. I found that one when I was cleaning up. I put it on a postcard and I sent it out with a little poem on the back. But you would not believe, and Dale would remember, that he won this absolutely huge bottle of whiskey. I don't know how long it took him to drink it, but I suspect being gone, it didn't take long. <laughs> on the way home, probably. <laughs> yeah. I, went, I once offered him a check when he was busking, but he told me to piss off he wouldn't take my check. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Can we just have another uh, round of applause for Chris Clark from the Shiny Bum Singers? Yeah. Oh, up, an updated <laughs> and, and send the lyrics to Sandra, Chris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. Thanks, fellas. Okay, who have we got coming up next, Lane? So we want to look for, um, we're looking out for, uh, where are we got? Um, is Don Ray there? Don Ray. Don Ray, is Don Ray with us? Yeah, I'm just a spectator, thanks. Oh, uh, just spectating? Okay. Yes, no thanks. problem. Respectful yeah. potato. That's Thank it. You're on you, John. Thank you. No problem. Can we, okay. can we hear uh, Dave Moyer? Oh, please. Is he there? Who are they asking for? Is it Dave, did you say? Yeah, I'd like to hear Dave. Yeah, have we got Dave Moyer there? Am I on? Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, I didn't think I was going to get a go, but um, there you are. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm on. Coming through beautiful. All right. Yep. Uh, this is a song that uh, John did, but I didn't hear him sing it. I um, I seen him down at the uh, Fortune of War pub down at the uh, <coughs> down at the rocks. And that's where I first met him. This is a song called uh, Train to Lidcombe. It 
was a blazing day in January 1982. They were praying for us suddenly from Lithgo to the loo. I crooked from St. Glee to Central like a lobster or a crab. I the sweating taxi driver and alighted from the crowd. Platform 18, platform 19, there's an element of doubt. But you've always got the indicator there to help you out. And the fella with a microphone dispensing wisdom free. Party's information and his indicator don't agree. Well, the train crawls out of Central to a soft, iconic cheer. Hooray! I'll sell me mother's wedding ring for half a glass of beer. I'm hot, I'm in the horrors, and me thirst is raging right. And I fear that every pub we pass is only a mirage. Faces to the west and we're sizzling on the grill. We have to wait a half an hour at some bloody hill. We stop and start like Murphy's cart, me tempers turn them sour. And near in Flemington, I wait another half an hour. I staggered out at Lidcombe, contemplating suicide. My compass it has melted and me camels they have died. My fevered brain surrounds the train like breweries and their stills. And bleaching on the platform are the bones of Burks and Will. You can talk of Matthew Flinders, you can talk of Captain Sir. You can rave about explorers till your throat begins to hurt. Yes, I'm known I've crossed the oceans and they've traveled rough terrain. But there's none of them could face a trip to Lidcombe on the train. No, there's none of them could face a trip to Lidcombe on the train. There's the John. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I don't think I heard that one before. Huh? Right. Right. Good on you, Dave. Thanks. Yeah, you should see him down the hero, uh, the Fortune of War, down the rocks there, uh, performing and uh, talking. Wonderful. You never got a word in, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just got to be a really good listener and then you're rewarded for your patience. Yeah, well, yeah, he tried to please people. Good on you, Dave. Thanks a lot, mate. We just got a public service announcement at the moment. Um, Pat Drummond sends his apologies. He was going to be performing, but he's doing something else. He wasn't able to come. Yeah, he, did, he hasn't sent us a note or anything to explain it. We're, if you're there, Pat, we want to know why yeah. you're not doing it. <laughs> but he was going to do Bill from Erskineville. So that song is available. If someone was planning to do that, uh, it'd be great. Mm -hmm. And um, have we got someone else lined yeah. up? So we're looking, we want to look for John Warner. We're looking for John Warner now. Or Richard Wright. We're still trying to find him. Uh, Richard Wright. One of those. John Warner or Richard Wright. Come in, please. Uh, we've got Robin. Oh, what about Robin uh, Connerton? Robin Connerton. Oh, you see Robin? Robin Connerton there. Connerton, is it? Connaught. Robin Connerton. There we go. Hello. He's on mute. Are They're you on... backing up? Or... Oh, yeah. Uh, there go. Yeah, there go. I've just sent them the... Have you got it? There we go. Oh, hey, there you there we go. got it. We got Okay, we're doing Carlinford. Oh, yeah. Robert. Oh, Carlinford. Beautiful. Right. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, when I was a boy in Carlingford, for 60 years ago, the eucalypts stood straight and tall. And the creeks did sweetly flow. But times were hard when the old man died, and the orchard would not pay. 
So I left the land for the factory bench, and I'm working there still today. I have earned my bread in the metal shops for 40 years or more. My hands are hard and acid scarred as the board on the workshop floor. My soul is sheathed in Kembla steel and my eyelids have turned to brass. And the orchard's gone and the apple trees where the wind whispered through the grass. The workbench is my altar where I come to take the hose. Copper, brass and fine sheet steel Father, Son and Holy Ghost The sacramental wine of work grows sour upon my tongue. Oh, the fruit was sweet on the apple trees when my brothers and I were young. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, fellas. Gorgeous. I like guess while we're on, that Robin do the brick and the old trout. It's a very good yarn. Go for it. Okay. They're worth more than 10 quid, aren't they? Oh, we're worth $15 now. Are oh, you $15? That's inflation. American. There's been a few people commenting about John busking down uh, around the arches around Central. And uh, this actually, this poem describes an actual event he and I underwent. I was thinking last week of my old mate, John Dengate, poet, artist and singer, a wordsmith of note. And, dare it be said, the man of sweet malice, when he shafted politicians with a quotable quote. Now, when I worked at Central, I'd often see John. He busked Eddie Avenue as often as not. Back to the park, he played the tin whistle, a nice little act in a good paying spot. John had no peer in the fine art of busking, with old flannels, sports jacket, the collar turned up to keep out cold winds or the occasional shower. He looked an old digger, a bit down on his luck. Whenever I saw him down by the arches, I'd stop for a while and we'd have a good yak about Polly's, his teeth, the evils of bookies, and on leaving, I'd toss a few coins in his hat. It became a set joke professional manners. After all, I was taking up time on his patch. I could hit his old hat with a coin from the gutter, though sometimes he'd save the day with a slips catch. And then came the day of the brick and the old trout. I had tossed John a dollar. It made a nice clink. When a voice close behind said, you're giving him too much. You'll only encourage his addiction to drink. Behind me, there stood a tall, bony woman, blue rinsed, overdressed from her pearls to her shoes. They're all the same, these derelicts. Only he calls it busking. Whatever you give him, he'll just spend it on booze. I thought, geez, that's rough. And I turned back to John, but he knuckled his forehead and gave me a wink that said plain and clear, we could have some fun here. So I said, is it true, my man? Would you spend it on drink? John paused for a little and said, some possibility. There's some possibility she may be right. Would I spend that whole dollar you gave me on liquor I'm rather afraid, my young sir, that I might. I thought, young sir, you bastard, John, I'll get you for that. But it was serve and return, so I said, well, okay. And I flipped him a 20, a brick, red and folded. Can you make that one last you the rest of the day? The old trout near laid an egg. 
but John sadly returned it. That brick's far too rich for my battered old hat. But I've an idea. We could each get a beer, a schooner apiece. What do you say to that? And with the small change, buy the old trout a sherry, a port, double whiskey, brandy or such. Young sir, that would be pure Christian charity. Between us, I doubt she gets asked out too much. The old trout, she wowsed and yodeled. How dare you, as if I would touch liquor. But her face went bright red. Then she turned on her heel with the speed of an eel and she just buggered off. I'm sorry, she fled. It's a cold day in hell and I'm drinking cold beer with the Pope and rum chasers with the rest of his train. Such a cold day in hell will it be, me old dear, before ever you patronise John Dengate again. Yes. That's it. Fantastic. Oh, man. It's all true. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a bloody beauty. That's from the 10 quid palms. Robin Connaughton, and who's your mate there? Don Warner. Do you want a song from John? John Warner. We certainly, we certainly do, John. I haven't seen you for a long time, mate. Okay, makes it easy. I like your shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Chris Maltby used to quote that one. It's a grand line. Now, this is John Dengate's Mad Monk about um, Tony Abbott. But as people said, Tony Abbott's gone a little bit further, so I've added a, a verse, I hope, in the spirit of John Dengate. Oh dear, just how low have the liberals sunk? They've chosen the leader, the raving mad monk, a royalist, a rat bag, a popish ex mug, reactionary Tony, the monarchist pope. They've sat Malcolm Turnbull and put in his stead, a bloke who's been punched far too hard round the head. Too many left hooks, which rather explains the crackpot ideas running round in his brain. It's enough to send Methodists out on the binge. He's a punchy ex priest from the lunatic fringe. A vile father, Tony, who's frightened of hell, who raises his fist at the sound of the bell. They've chosen the leader, a real troglodyte, a cruiserweight lout from the party's far right, a punch-throwing tapist, no times must be grim, for the Tories to choose a mad bastard like him. Now Abbott said England to England's distress, to join Boris Johnson to play in his mess, and Britons will pray like that King long deceased, won't somebody rid us of that turbulent priest? Oh dear, as how low have the Liberals sunk? They've chosen as leader the raving mad monk, a royalist, a rat bag, a popish ex punk, reactionary Tony, the monarchist thug. <laughs> John, that was a beauty. Just got a little footnote, if you can hear me out there. Yeah, uh, are the £10 palms listening? Yeah. 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 Still there, yeah. £10, yeah. Just, just a song you might like to look up if you haven't already heard it by Roar and Jack. It's called Plan for the Traffic about busking. Have you heard that one? Yeah, a while ago, but yeah. yeah. Plan, plan for the traffic. Yeah, look it up, mate. I'm sure you'll love it. All right, we've got um, Martin and Lynn. We've got a video yeah. from Martin and Lynn Doherty now for your enjoyment. Let's uh, let that roll in. And um, great to see Lynn and, and Martin again. Martin, haven't seen him for a long time. I think Martin was on here before. Yeah, Martin was on there. If Martin, if you're listening, Johnny Clough's here with us. 
he's watching the proceedings and uh, being very strict with controlling what's happening here. <laughs> so it's all running, you know, on three cylinders. <laughs> Is it three out of four? Four, yeah, three, three cylinders. Four, yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, we're just going to switch over to the video and we'll be back. Okay. The water is white. I can swim over. And neither have I wings to fly. Give me a boat that can carry two. And we both shall grow, my love and I. Screen Martin and Lynn. No, I haven't seen them. Okay, that's no. right. They're probably out doing a bit of farming. They're doing a lot of farming <laughs> out at Wallera Wing. Do you want to see if Sean's ready? Sean Dengate, are you in the house? Max and Lainey, how are, are you, you both? Lovely to hear your voice. There this you been, are. This has been seven years that we've been doing this. Yeah. Yeah, we're just saying that Cal looks like he's aged years in the last year. <laughs> he's playing he's like a proper flamenco. Yeah, well, Max, I'm glad you said he's aged and, and you weren't making any comments about my aging. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I thought... You're a diplomat, mate. I thought that was John for a minute. <laughs> oh, I did. Well, Max and Laney, uh, thank you once again. We love this event. We love what you guys do. You're absolute stars. Um, this is, a, I was going to tell more of a story than um, sing a song today. Uh, if this story was told at the beginning of the year, 
wouldn't have made much sense. But uh, there's a bit more people uh, telling this sort of story now. So see if you can, uh, maybe you might recognize the character who's telling this. Well, I went to a Wuhan market. I just went for a chat. I thought I'd get some soup. I made easy on the bat. Now my temperature's rising. My brow's bursting, beads of sweat. Oh, I've just caught a common cold. There's no need to fret. I know what I need to fix me up. Some place I can get some booze. So I booked myself on a holiday on the Ruby Princess Cruise. There's panic on the cruise ship. People are starting to die. The bloke next to me doesn't look too good. Can I have the rest of your pie? As we off board at Sydney, customs gave me a glare. You don't look too well, my friend. Have you anything to declare? Oh, I'm full of fever. I can't shake this cough. I'm tired all the time. The Grim Reaper visits me every night. But apart from that, I'm fine. I decided to visit the doctor. And this is what I heard her say. You've got COVID-19 and it's home. You'll have to stay with your test results are on. I'll come back and see you later. I can't have the coronavirus. I've got a house full of toilet paper. Your medical logic is flawed. In fact, I say it's a false. You can't stop the respiratory virus just by wiping your ass. Sure, that came as a surprise, but as I attempted to clear my throat, I remembered I had a backup plan, a warehouse full of soap. I decided to go home. I had accepted my fate. Two weeks on my own, as I tried to self-isolate. Got myself some beer and a bag of chips. And I settled on my couch for a marathon session on Netflix. And now my corpse sits on the couch staring at the TV screen. No one comes to visit. No one knows where I've been. The maggots devour my body. The only company for this loner. They feast on virus and chips and wash it down. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that, was a, that was a voice from the dead, mate. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> that was so uh, good. That's Thank the talking you coach. That. Thank you. That is wonderful. So great, Sean. That's it. Is that it for you, is it, Sean? Well, it's one song per person, isn't it? <laughs> That'll do me. <laughs> Can't even well, not for tell a story. the dead game. The Den Gates can have different roles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank Good you. On That's it. That was fantastic. I'm trying to get Rasheen to do a sure. poem, but I'm not sure I'll succeed. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'd love to hear her do a poem if she wants to. She can, she can hide if she doesn't want to go on video. <laughs> okay, I'll let her know. I think she's hiding now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Are we still looking All for right. Richard Wright? So, yeah, so we've a couple of people on the list that we still haven't found is um, Richard Wright. And I think uh, Don Ray. Did we find Don Ray? We've got Don. Uh, or did Don say he's just watching? Yeah, he was just watching. Yeah, yeah. I'm just part of the audience today. Thank you. Oh, okay, no worries. Sorry, Don. I'll, I'll come back another few times. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to just make sure, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Okay, so with Richard Wright is still uh, missing. Have we got anyone else here that didn't put their name down but would like to do a song or a poem or share a story? Margaret Walter is going to do one. Oh, lovely. Where are you, Margaret? Are you there, Margaret? I think I saw her before. There uh, she is up here. There she is. I'll just yeah. unmute you, darling. There you go. Hello, Margaret. She's back on mute again. 
Oh, I'm just gonna press. I'm just gonna press the button here, ask to unmute, and then you just press. You just press the unmute. There you go. Oh no, you go back again. There you are. Yep, that's the one. Uh, I hadn't planned on singing anything. I'm happy just to be listening. Great ah, are you sure? God, Lane. Yep, I'm fine. Oh, thanks, love. Thank you. No problem. All right. What else Tom. have we got? What about what Tom about Henry. Mr. Tom Henry? Tom Henry, you got something for us? We can see you there trying to hide, Tom Henry. I'm just pressing the button on for you. You just got to press on the screen. Press unmute. There you go. Oh, no, we still can't hear you, my friend. Still can't hear you, Tom. You might have your uh, volume down. Can you do some a song in sign language, perhaps? <laughs> that uh, sem semaphore, what's it called? <laughs> no, not happening. All righty. I'll try, I'll try and do, your, do it again. Wait a second. Oh, no, that's, that's a bit of an anticlimax. Oh, there well, we go. All right, well, while we just uh, see if uh, anyone else wants to put their hand up, I'm going to switch you back over to Mr. Rex Havoc, who's going to share a, one of his favourites for us. Um, yeah, this is um, John's Lanes of Woolloomooloo, which is one I've always loved hearing at the Friend in Hand, at all the, um, the great memorials we've had. And it's usually read by... One of the Peters, I can't remember which Peter it is, Peter Mace, I think. Um, uh, he doesn't read it actually, he knows it and he can recite it. Here we go. Oh then who's your mate, my Johnny lad? So drunk he can hardly stand, with his eyeballs staring so wildly, and his violently shaken hand. His name is not for the naming, but his story will tell you true. He's a child of the Great Depression from the lanes of Woolloomooloo. Reared on bread and dripping and on dollops of dull plum jam. He dodged the police in his father's boot and his fare on the city tram. Mustered in the militia on the wharves of Woolloomooloo. Fought disease in the Japanese in the summer of 42. Never mind his shaking hand or his strangely twisted mouth. He was cut off at Templeton's crossing when the Japs came swarming south. He wept and prayed in the jungle, and God to his prayers was deaf. Choco, retreat on your bleeding feet, and where was the AIF? You'll find him now in Bell's Hotel, or round by the domain. You'll find him under a Morton Bay, slipping it off in the rain. You'll find him wandering William Street, without any work to do. He's a child of the Great Depression, from the lanes of Woolloomooloo. He's a hollow, dirty derelict, abandoned by the fates. His soul's at Templeton's crossing with his dead militia mates. White lady is his mistress. They fornicate and woo, spawning blind oblivion in the lanes of Woolloomooloo. Beautiful. Uh, I just have to uh, a little story to that as a coda, as, as Johnny Dengate would say. Uh, John and I went out to sing some songs out at a school out at Campbelltown. It was called Lamia or Lamia, one of those wild Campbelltown schools for an Australia Day rhubarb session. On the way back, we called in at the local pub, the aforementioned Grumpies, where Johnny's former students, the twins, were the barmaids there. And we sat down at a couple on the way back home, as you do, and a fellow joined us who was, you know, quite common in the bar, this bloke, but he was a, um, a man of letters, a professor from the university. So him and John are swapping yarns about uh, literary stuff. And um, John, as, as he does sometimes, just broke into the reciting of the lanes of Willamaloo. And at the end of it, our um, esteemed professor said, Oh, yes, that's bloody Henry Lawson, wasn't he? A magnificent writer. And Johnny looked at me and <laughs> with his sneaky smile. And I had the pleasure of telling our professor that it was written by 
the man sitting next to him. <laughs> Not the famous part. Uh, anyway. That's great. Yeah, a magnificent poem. And what great praise to be mistaken for Henry Lawson. Oh, man. Anyway. That's great. Let's carry on. So I think um, that was beautiful. A round of applause. Um, now, I think, was it, was it Russell before that was saying you could do a poem? Was that you, yeah, Russell? Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, this one's for Dale, really, because, uh, as you all know, Dale is a Kiwi originally. And uh, I quite like Ooh. New Zealand, uh, except for the, uh, problem, <laughs> the, the problem with the language. It's not as bad as Glasgow, but it's pretty bad. And uh, I didn't realise it before I went there. And I watched Helen Clark, who was the Prime Minister, and was very broad Kiwi. And I watched her, and the chasers were interviewing her, and trying to get her to say six. And she was too cunning for them. She'd say, oh, half a dozen. Oh, you know, around about five or seven. But she'd never, ever say six. And when I went over there, I realised why. And I wrote this little poem. We're over here in Kiwi land. There's very little fuss. Because everyone speaks English. Just the same as us. And folk all understand you. At least that's what I thought. Till I tried to buy five pies for lunch. And that's when I got caught. I'd like to have five pies, I said. I think it's my turn next. She said, you can have one free if only you'll have sex. Well, I never had this offer. It seemed too good to miss. So I leant across the counter, thought I'd plant a little kiss. But when I picked myself up from the floor, I saw my eye was black. What was worse? I never had the pies. I'd need another snack. And I thought I heard her say that I was simply Aussie trash and I ought to be deported for trying to be flesh. So if you ever deal with Kiwis, beware their cunning tricks and only ever ask for five and never ask for sex. She's managed to lose most of a broad accent, but by gee, when you go over there, there's a lot who haven't. And, and Jacinda's another one. You listen to her. Uh, she has got a broad uh, yeah. accent. She once said, I'll tell you what she once said, uh, they asked her how she'd go if she was having a baby while she was Prime Minister. And she said that she, she'd be okay because after six weeks off, she would be back on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got Daniel, uh, Daniel Kelly. Have we got you in the room, sir? Yeah, okay. You there, Dan Kelly? Yep, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes, we can, we can hear you. Can hear, there he is. Yeah, All right, fun, let's Dan. pop you on if you're ready to take it away. Turn the mic up a bit, is that better? So I don't, don't know many uh, Dengate songs, but as a, a writer of uh, topical songs and political parody, um, he's been a, a great inspiration for songwriters like me. Um, this song I wrote, um, in relation to the police raids on the ABC last year, or maybe the year before. On the 5th of June in Sydney town, the men in suits they came, tasked to rewrite history, hide evidence and blame. Freedom of the press is a rock on which we stand, now the fear and anger spreads across the land. Red chipping at the pillars of democracy. Freedom falls in the name of security. By the chisel and the jackhammer, watchmen as they fall. Soon to be the cage 
that will surround us all. Open your eyes and stand up for democracy. Don't tell the lies, destroy our democracy. This wasn't about saving lives, the horse had left the gates. To keep this story under wraps, it clearly was too late. This was only retribution to intimidate the press. Until the crimes of the government, and you'll be in a mess. Now they're chipping at the pillars of democracy. Freedom falls in the name of security. By the chisel and the jackhammer, watch them as they fall. Soon to be the cage will surround us all. Open your eyes and stand up for democracy. Don't let the lies destroy our democracy. This house of our democracy is built on four strong towers. Justice and equality and the right to elect power. The fourth it is our freedom to hear and speak what's true. Even when it is uncomfortable for the few Now they're chipping at the pillars of democracy Freedom falls in the name of security By the chisel and the jackhammer Watch them as they fall Soon to be the cage That will surround us all Open your eyes and stand up for democracy don't let the lies destroy our democracy. This wasn't the first occurrence. As Bernard and Witness came. They'd come from raiding Annika just the other day. It's nothing to do with me, says the Prime Minister. But the truth is something far more sinister. That chipping at the pillars of democracy. Freedom falls in the name of security By the chisel and the jackhammer Watch them as they fall Soon to be the cage That will surround us all Open your eyes And stand up for democracy Don't let the lies Destroy our democracy Open your eyes And stand up for democracy Thanks very much. All right. Beautiful work. Beautiful, Daniel. Thanks very much, mate. <laughs> what a magnificent uh, original song. And the tune's yours too, I imagine? Ah, uh, yes, that one's mine. There's it gone. Yeah. 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 Beautiful song. Thanks very much, Daniel. Amazing. Okay, so we've got, a, uh, we've got a, another vid to share here. I just wanted to see if, if anyone wants to go after the next video. Does anyone want to put their hand up to do a song? Or is it just watching, just yeah, watching you, and loving? <laughs> if, you, if you'd like a, uh, an update on a John Dengate poem. Alan, where are you, Alan? I'm just trying to find you on my screen so I can make your video bigger. There he is. Ah, oh, there he is. Hello, Alan. Sorry, I couldn't see you before. Okay. Today, uh, Take it away. Called, uh, liberal leadership about uh, Fraser ousting Snedden. Change a few names and it ends up like this. Well, God looked down from heaven saying, peace, goodwill to men. Then cast his eyes on Canberra and blinked and looked again. But there he saw unfolding a foul and fiendish plot. The Liberal Party leadership was in the melting pot. I'm leader, squawks poor Turnbull. I'm leader till kingdom come. We know you are the answer. You're the leader, Malcolm. But best beware the Ides of March and try to get the knack of building up immunity to daggers in the back. <laughs> they filed into the party room where Menzies' portrait frowned and next to that is Harold Holtz done just before he drowned. Oh, you remember Harold Holt? He chose a watery fate. And so would you if you were played by Zara and Jeff Bate. Now, 
Christopher Pine was cunning and showed a bit of sense. When called upon to commit himself, he sat upon the fence. He doesn't like the sight of blood, the thought he's bound to shun, so he reserves his loyalty to when the winners won. Peter Dutton thought he'd win, because he's clever, honest and fair. But the smiling assassin rose and raised his hands into the air. The leadership, <coughs> he cleared his throat, the leadership is vacant, we agree. And the people right across the land replied, you're telling me. Well, anyway, the time had come to put it to the vote. I'm leader bald old Turnbull. Sit down, you billy goat. The democratic process is the thing that must prevail. And the voice from somewhere to the right was heard to cry, Sig Heil! It was raving Tony Abbott, who moved that rice should be declared a noxious weed, but they ruled him out of order so the meeting could proceed. We know Morrison got the nod and Turnbull got the sack. Why, in the second verse, John mentioned daggers in the back. He's gone the way of Bill McMahon, the way that Gorton went. Morrison's treading lightly, lest he stir up discontent. No wonder the employment situation looks so crook. There's out-of-work ex-liberal leaders everywhere you look. Change the names and nothing changes. That's right, yeah, nothing changes. All right, so we're going to try, hopefully uh, this video works. We haven't had a good luck the last couple of goes, but uh, this, this one's from Paddy Manning, who uh, unfortunately couldn't get on the actual stream. Um, he's out of town, but he sent this video, so we're going to give it a go. Okay, so um, this is an electric guitar, which John would hate, and I'm going to do a song that uh, John didn't write. Uh, but which I certainly heard John sing a lot of times and it's the only person I've ever heard sing it. Uh, you'd all be aware that um, Australia's purchased a uh, joint strike fighter, the F-35, that's blown out like 6,000%, costing us $17 billion. And uh, some things never change, of course, and uh, we, we went through the same process 50 years ago, and this is the subject of a song that John sang often. <clears throat> and I'm going to do my best in tribute to John. G'day everyone, uh, my name's Paddy. Now, Mr. Robert Menzies was walking down the street and thinking of our Air Force, which was mostly obsolete. Our Canberra bobbers are getting old as hell. I'd better call up Uncle Sam and see what he can sell. Oh, the F-111, it is a lovely plane. It flies at twice the speed of sound and scatters bombs like rain. Its wings go back and forward, it's the latest thing around. It's a pity that it isn't safe to take it off the ground. He said to Uncle Sammy, we want to buy a plane To save our lovely country from going down the drain We want to scare some Asians, so see what you can do The answer was, Bob, buddy, we've got just the thing for you Bob said we'll take two dozen, the plane they had to make And soon they had one ready, its first flight for to take it whistled down the runway with a dreadful roaring sound Then broke up in little bits and fell back on the ground Oh, the F-111, it is a lovely plane It flies at twice the speed of sound and scatters bombs like rain Its wings go back and forward, it's the latest thing around It's a pity that it isn't safe to take it off the ground they sent six off to Vietnam, the country to defend 
to wipe out all the Viet Cong and cause the war to end. It whistled down the, whoops, but Ho, Ho Chi Minh said, comrades, don't waste our precious shells. These brand new planes the Yankees have all fall down by themselves. Oh, the F-111, it is a lovely plane. It flies at twice the speed of sound and scatters bombs like rain. Its wings go back and forward, it's the latest thing around. It's a pity that it isn't safe to take it off the ground. Now years have come and years have gone and we all still depend on our nice Canberra bombers, our country to defend. The plane's prices double every time one takes a spill. And if Sir Robert still was here, we'd make him pay the bill. And when they are all ready, and we have paid the fee, our generous Uncle Sammy will make delivery. But I doubt if it will do much good to him or you or I. At the present rate of accidents, we've got a weak supply of the F-111. It is a lovely plane. It flies at twice the speed of sound and scatters bombs like rain. Its wings go back and forward. It's the latest thing around. It's a pity that it isn't safe to take it off the ground. Thanks very much. Thank you, Patty. The oldies are good. Champion. Champion. <laughs> That's great. Anyone remember that song from, from a long time ago? It was a beauty. I just found my I just found my set tape with that song on uh, it. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Look at That's that. Fantastic. <laughs> What a classic. It says... I've still got... Yeah, look at that. The Larrikins, Dennis Kevins, Red Gum, John Dengue, Eric Bogle. What a oh line-up. Oh, my God. God. That's yeah. a good and I haven't even got a tape player to play it on anymore. We oh, we got one in my car. Recorded at the Tom Man, the Tom Man um, uh, whatever it was there at uh, in uh, Cleveland Street. Not Cleveland, yeah. Was it Cleveland? Yeah. Just there near Central Railway that was recorded. Yeah. 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 Crown Crown Street. Street. One of the first ones Crown I got. Karma Street. <laughs> wow. That's a great find. Oh, there's Miguel coming back again. There um, is. You there, Miguel? Oh, he's got something on his shoulder. He's carried. <laughs> that was weird. He... Might have been a body, was it? No, no, it wasn't a body. <laughs> Probably a guitar. There's guitars everywhere. I've never seen as many guitars as I have in the backgrounds of these. Um, Miguel, groups. can you hear us, Miguel? I've got Rebel Chorus on vinyl here. Am, am I still oh, muted? I wanted to say something. Am I muted? Now we can hear you. I can just want to say you. something about Bill from Erskineville because when I was deciding to buy a house, um, my son said, don't ever, ever buy a house in Erskineville because that's the pits. Oh, I did. It's probably worth <laughs> millions now. And um, then, do you remember, Dale, uh, you came to have, have a light look to see about buying a house in my house in Erskineville. You chose against it. I don't think it was because you thought it was trash. But anyway, <laughs> you didn't buy it. But there's, a, there's, a, there's an Erskineville connection. Oh, amazing. Now, what about Dale? Would you do the... Oh, there, there she is. Oh, we can't hear you, Dale. Wait a second. I'm just going to unmute you. You just got to press the button on the screen that says unmute. Okay. I just heard Jerry Myerson. Who does he have one, Jerry? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, we did buy a house in Erskineville and Lachlan lives there. Ah. Ah, that's oh. a good spot. But not my house. Not your house, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but to Erskineville. And I only left Erskineville because I ran out of room for musical instruments and grandchildren and I moved somewhere else. Ah. <laughs> only reason. I loved it. And it's I, great. I just wanted to see if Jerry, Jerry wanted to show his uh, record he's got there. Oh, yes. Look at it. <laughs> Beautiful. That looks like it's in good condition too. Well, it probably is. Uh, 
since I don't have anything to play it on. <laughs> Give me a call, Jerry, and I'll find you one off the side of the road. Yeah. I pick them up all the player. time. <laughs> That's the way. Hey, Jerry, do you, do you do a song maybe? Yeah, I could. Um, yeah. Let's see, this is, um, well, I'm trying to uh, arrange things here. Um, so, uh, uh, as you all know, John sent a lot of his uh, uh, lyrics to Irish tunes. And um, the, uh, the song that I'd like to sing is not a John Dengate song, and it's not an Irish song, but it does relate to Irish tunes. And uh, it goes like this. As I walked out one May morning to take a pleasant air, I saw a pretty girl walking by with roses in her hair. I stepped right up and I said to her, pretty girl, I think you're grand. She smiled at me and said, of course, I come from Ireland. Polly Wally Rua, Polly Wally Rua, I come from Ireland. That's very nice, I'm sure, I said, you do the country proud. But would you like to take a walk somewhere beyond the crowd? She said that was a pleasant thought, so we began to roam. Until we reached a building grand where this girl made her home. Polly Wally Rua, Polly Wally Rua, where this girl made her home. She asked me to take off my coat. And, and and rest and rest. She mm. asked me to take off my coat and rest me for a while. She went into another room, which caused me for to smile. She soon came back to where I sat. She didn't keep me long, and sitting down beside me said, "I think I'll sing a song." Polly Wally Roo, ah, Polly Wally Roo, I think I'll sing a song. And then this girl began to play, it began to sing in a voice both high and clear. She sang of dear old Ireland, the country she held dear. She sang me songs I'd never heard, she'd learned them from her mother. And when one song was finished, well, she'd start out on another and another and another and another and a Polly Wally Roo, ah, Polly Wally Roo, ah, she start out on another. The night came closing swiftly in, and still she sang right on. Uh, uh, sorry. She, well. The night, the night closed in around us, and still she sang right on. Hmm, sorry. And when at last the morning came, I said I had to go. It's been a very pleasant night, and now this much I know. Ireland has leprechauns. She suffered many wrongs. Ireland has peat bog fires and an awful lot of songs. Polly Wally Roo, ah, Polly Wally Roo, an awful lot of songs. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Jerry. Thanks very much. Well, Jerry Myerson. You know that you yeah. can buy um, cassette players and turntables that'll plug into your computers these days? The, oh. USB, the cassette ones aren't very expensive, about 40 or $50, and the turntables are around $100. So if you look in any of the... Um, uh, places like um, JB Hi-Fi, J-Car and places like that. You can get them. Your, ga uh, your garage? My, <laughs> not in my garage, you're in my house because I use them occasionally. I think the real <laughs> problem is that the tapes have deteriorated to the point where they're unplayable. Yeah, well, that's yeah. another problem, yes. Vinyl would be much uh, better. I've got 40, yeah. I've got 40 year old on. tapes still playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dad, Dad, Dad's got the tape player in his car going. It's the, one of the only cassette players still going in a car. Yeah, it's a Commodore and it's still got a beautiful player and I've got some tapes from 40 years ago still playing. 
Roaring yeah, Jack I've got is a tape them. player in the car. My, my car was born at the right yeah. time. It has both tape and CD. It's great. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, look, Julie. I think, I think Margaret Bradford, did you, have a, did you have a vinyl you were showing off there? I was showing you the... Um, oh, they called lovely. him a <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, I've got a cassette of that one, too. Is that a pig? Is that a pig on the front? Yeah, it's a pig. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I called him a worship, you bastard. Uh, lovely. That's now, so good. I, I can see uh, uh, Miguel. Sorry, Dale, did you want to say something there? I was just going to say the story of that cover on I called him a worship, you bastard, uh, was done by, because uh, it's a pig's head, of course, and the obvious references yeah. are... Uh, but it was um, um, Davy uh, Scott uh, knew somebody up there in Newcastle who designed it. I think that was. Oh, uh, yeah, it's suitably creepy looking, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yes. That's, it's pun about the punchline comes. From oh, okay. punchline comes from Dennis. Sing Bill from Erskineville, but he said he does that all the time, and people would be sick of it. So that's why. He's going to sing later on uh, when I think it's going to be played on video short, shortly. Um, one he did here was The Sun Was Setting, and it's um, one he read about the plague and the, how people would, uh, in those days, yep. sometimes so many people dying that uh, sometimes they were afraid that people were put into their coffin before they were dead. So they had a, a sort of string that you could ring the bell. That was the oh, dead. Well. You had to stay yeah. in this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, shall we play that now? All right, may as well. Yes, yeah, so somebody had to stay oh, yeah. in the to wait for the person to ring the bell, the dead ringer. No, uh, okay. Just while Lane's organising that to play, Tom Waits, you might have heard of Tom Waits, yeah. gravelly voice singer, hated being interviewed. So when he was on David Letterman's show, he pulled out a notebook and started asking David Letterman questions and telling him stories. And he told that story of the, <laughs> of the dead ringer for no particular reason. <laughs> He's very entertaining though. Not, not good to interview, but good to watch. He's a genius. Yeah, he's a genius. Johnny Dengate loved Tom Waits. Oh, I'm sure he did. He used to sing a lot of his songs. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get the dead ringer a go. I'm just opening it up here. Fingers crossed. All right.
musical drummer hogging the, the microphone to the end. Good on you, Lockie. And the, the crew. Most, one of the most sensitive drummers I've heard. Yeah. He's a, he's a sensitive new age drummer. That's right. All right, that's fantastic. All right, I think we've got um, the rowers are going to take on a tune for us now. I'm just going to switch them over there. Good on you, Jason and Chloe. John used to say, "How I, John used to say, never explain, never apologise." So I'm sorry, uh, but we've never done this one before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet you. My name is Bill. I'm working in the factory in Erskineville. You have to crawl, and conditions are a crime. But you get a few dollars worth of overtime Hooray, ain't life grand I'm saving the deposit on a block of land I met a fella selling real estate He's running from the coppers in another state And he's the friend of a generous gent Who's lending money at 20% Hooray, life's a lark I'm swimming in the water with a finance shark I had a couple of dollars on a short priced horse He's running in the welter on the Rose Hill course But too much weight and too little pace And the bugger finished 12th in a 12 horse race Hooray, faithful nag, ferrying the money to the bookies bag. Well, I had a little flutter on the poker machines, and I won a dollar forty when it paid three queens. So I chased the aces around the wheels. Now I can't afford the money to pay for meals. Hooray! Feed the slot Push your pump and button till you lose a lot Well, lottery tickets had me up shit creek I was 20 off a five dollar prize last week The tyres on me car are all worn through And the registration's overdue Hooray! Hit the rock. For a worn out second hand holding car. Well, I said to me wife, we've reached the stage we where we cannot manage on a single wage. Now she pulls beer in the afternoon and the kids run wild in the pub saloon. <laughs> Hooray! Name your brand long Drinking the deposit on a block of land Well I'm pleased to meet you My name's Bill I've been sacked from the factory in Erskineville It's a bit dated now because there's no factory left in nursing. Yes. It's, it's, it's still autobiographical. They're all million dollar bloody apartments. That's great. Johnny Clough just Johnny Clough just said to me he remembers that three queens did play a dollar forty. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> we stopped those buildings in Erskineville. We stopped some of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good on you, Mary Jane. Great work. Well, not me. Everybody. Yeah, go to the green bands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we haven't had. We haven't had um, our mate oh, I know. doing green bands forever. Yeah, Russell. The DMR song. Peter Russell. Peter Russell, if you're out there in yeah. cyberspace, come in. Come in, Peter Russell. We haven't had the Betty Winter song. Oh, we haven't had the Betty Windsor song either. Betty Windsor. That's um, Miguel knows that one, the um, Queensland trilogy. You there, Miguel? Oh, he's doing a bit of a so-so. Wanted to give it a go. What was it again? The, the Queensland medley. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the New Zealand, New Zealand medley. You want Johnny? Do you the New Zealand medley? 
Yeah, that'll do. Yeah. That'll do. He said, <laughs> yeah. Well, all I remember of that is, um, don't throw eggs at the monarch's legs. You New Zealand radicals are just the dregs. If you make a mess on the Queen's best dress, I imagine that Her Majesty yeah. will love you. Yes. Something or other, something or other. Wave, wave the flags with your mums. Don't be rude with your bums. It's the dregs to throw eggs at Betty Windsor's legs. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Thanks very much, Miguel. Thanks, Miguel. Now, uh, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Dale, uh, we're actually on time. Is this the first time anything has ever been on time? <laughs> <laughs> That's the technology is perfect. Mm. Well, it's been wonderful. Everybody has been part of it. Just, just uh, you know, so many tears and laughter and smiles. Just wonderful. So many fantastic memories. Yeah, just great. Fantastic. Now, did you want to, um, you know, the video you were going to play at the end, did you want to try and sing it live and see if everyone can try and sing it or is that too crazy? That's too crazy, I think. Like, uh, <laughs> emotional now. So play the video. I'll just tell you it got it's got a few cracks in. Um, I, it's a year since um, dear kid died, John's mother, oh, and yes. John wrote the song for his mother, who lived a very sad life. Um, really, this even more tragic than John knew at the time when he wrote it, uh, because mm. uh, she was not only a poor orphan girl, but when her mother did marry a fellow later who came back from the war. He was obviously suffering with the problems that sometimes people had and uh, Kit and her elder sister went up with the grandmother to Sydney but the uh, dad killed all the rest of the family. So one of those horrible stories, you know, of the uh, terrible impact that war can have on people. Um, oh. Kit would never talk about it. Um, mm. for a long John had written a song after, but when she said, Oh, not Gundagai, she didn't want to hear about Gundagai. There was a lot more. Uh, that makes much more sense, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was a hard time down then. Yeah, so wow. um, it, um, the other weekend uh, when Luce was here doing um, the filming, uh, the sun was setting in our lounge room. So uh, long shadows, which we just love. Um, mm. If you want to play the video, and everybody pretty much knows that we can sit sing along. And Kerith, my friend that I've been singing with for a while now at uh, the folk festivals, she and I were practicing this for the national that didn't happen. Um, and we did try Zooming and we realized that uh, the feedback, the, the timing, the mouth was uh, like singing in the worst venue that ever folk people had put up for us. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so we try it just, uh, but thanks to Kerit, she did send me uh, an accompaniment, um, but decided it was too complex. So let's just play the video and everybody sing along and uh, maybe we'll all meet again here in a year's time, but stay safe and keep singing. Thanks, Dale. That's, thanks, Dale. That's really good. Okay, I'm going to share this video, guys. Um, sing along if you know it, I'm sure you do. Very good. Natural grace, the big sad eyes in the Irish face. Poor bush girl, when the summer is high in the stony hills of Gundagai. Bare legged Kate, why do you weep when the men ride by with the travelling sheep? Does the sight of the drover make you sad? Do you think of the father? you never had. Bare-legged Kate with your natural grace, big sad eyes in the Irish face. The poor bush girl when the summer is high in the stony hills of Gundagai. Bare-legged Kate, why do you run down by the creek in the setting sun? Down where the eyes of the world cannot see Run, Kate, run from poverty. 
Three-legged cage with your natural grace. The big sad eyes in the Irish face. The poor bush girl when the summer is high. In the stony hill of Gundagai. Bare-legged Kate, there is gold in the hills. But you know that the cyanide process kills. Poisons the miners and cuts them down. In those mean little homes below the town. Bare-legged Kate, with your natural grace. The big sad eyes in the Irish face. The poor bush girl when the summer is high in the stony hills of Gundagai. Bare-legged Kate when the floods come down it's the poor on the creeks are the ones who drown when the great Murrumbidgee is thundering by in those haunted hills of Gundagai. Bare-legged Kate, with your natural grace, the big sad eyes in the Irish face, the poor bush girl when the summer is high in the haunted hills of the. Lovely. Beautiful right, song, beautifully sung. And um, so lovely. just about wrapping it up now, i um, just like to say thanks again to everybody joining us in cyberspace. And on the phones. And on the phones. And uh, this is a telethon. So start sending your money now. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> so, folks. Five 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 five. Just keep texting it in, and we 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 really need this money because we've got to go to the pub. Um, but just keep sending it. Don't worry about who you're sending it to. Send it to someone. Me, possibly the best idea. Care of five 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 five. That number again. Five 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 five. Send now. I'm waiting. See if I can. Just call that number, Max. An African prince answered. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 ask him to send you a check then. <laughs> He's probably got more money than you have. Well, I, I've got to say, John Dengate was not welcome back at the Shell Harbour Bowling Club. He came down one time and we went up to the Shell Harbour Bowling Club. He might have been performing at one of my trite nights. And uh, he got a super jackpot. Everyone had been waiting for the super jackpot on the poker machines and he went over and played it and got it. And they, everyone oh, was but he really pissed off with him because he was an outsider coming in, taking all their money. <laughs> I bet he didn't tell you about that, Dale. <laughs> what, what date was that again? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the oh, Shell Harbour yeah. Bowling Club's been knocked down for a lot of years now. <laughs> and a bloody tragedy too. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, I think we're signing off. Yeah. See you, Sean. Bye, Sean and Mandy. Bye. Everybody else, thanks very much again. Cheers. Big ears. Thank you. Bye bye. The best Brady bunch I've ever seen. <laughs>